by iliac breadth is taken while the subject is standing upright with the feet together and the waist area exposed. The technician stands behind the subject resting the large sliding caliper between the thumb and index finger of each hand. Using the middle fingers, the uppermost lateral borders of each ilium on the mid-axillary line are located on both sides of the body. The arms of the sliding caliper are placed on the lateral borders of the ilium, and the soft tissue is compressed firmly. The maximum breadth is measured to the nearest millimeter. For elbow breadth, the subject stands facing the technician. The right arm is extended forward and is flexed, so the upper arm and forearm form a 90 degree angle at the elbow. The fingers point up with the posterior part of the wrist toward the technician. While holding the caliper between the thumb and index finger of each hand, the technician palpates the epicondyles of the elbow with the middle fingers. The blades of the caliper are applied to the epicondyles at a 45 degree angle to the plane of the long axis of the upper arm. The soft tissue is compressed firmly. This measurement is taken with the calipers at a slight angle because the medial epicondyle is slightly more distal than the lateral epicondyle. The greatest breadth across the epicondyles of the humerus is measured to the nearest millimeter. The wrist breadth is measured with the subject standing. The subject extends the right arm directly to the front with the palm of the hand down. The small sliding caliper is held between the thumb and index finger of each hand. The technician palpates the most prominent aspects of the styloid processes of the ulna and radius with the middle fingers. The caliper blades are placed on these landmarks and firm pressure is applied to compress the soft tissues. The wrist breadth is recorded to the nearest millimeter.